Okay, so we're gonna do an integrated motion capture experiment now. Hannah's an all outfit with the optical motion captures with uh, wireless EMG sensors. She has the tracking coordinate system and the anatomical coordinate systems. We're gonna say we've done a static calibration so that we know her body position. Now these uh, optical motion capture markers are being tracked by several cameras that are around the room here. And when a marker is seen by two cameras, they can uh, develop algorithms that we'll cover in class that triangulate the position and give us the 3D coordinates of those markers. So we have combined 3D motion capture, EMG, and we're on top of a ground reaction force. And you'll see all of that equipment being used together. Now we're here in the lab and we can make measurements that are very high quality in the lab, but we might wanna see how we perform outside the lab. There's another motion capture technology that's frequently used called inertial measurement unit. So these are integrated uh, measurement units that have an accelerometer, a gyro, and a compass to give you heading. And we can put those on body segments just like the wireless EMG that Hannah has. In fact, some of the wireless EMG sensors now have integrated uh, inertial measurement units or IMUs. So that can be quite helpful for making long duration motions in the wild. And you're all familiar with IMUs because you have one in your phone. As this phone moves around and it changes your screen, that's using the uh, inertial measurement unit. And for a biomechanist, this is a dream come true to have the whole world basically carrying an IMU around in their pocket. It opens the door to a whole range of experiments that we couldn't do otherwise, that now we can do on a grand scale. So thanks. So Scott and Hannah, take it away to uh, analyze the jump. Great. So yeah, we're gonna have Hannah do a maximum height counter movement jump. So she'll drop all the way down and then she'll explode and jump off the ground. And we're gonna um, explode. explode, that's right. Um, we're going to look at a couple things. We're going to look at the ground reaction force trajectory and think about what we expect those forces to look like, as well as which muscles are activating at what different points during the jump. Um, yeah, do you want to talk about a few of the questions to think about before we record yeah, it? That's, yeah, so as Scott said, I'm going to go down, and there are different muscles that are going to activate as I go through different ranges of this jump. So just take a moment to think about what muscles might be activating as I'm lowering down to the ground, as I'm then extending back off the ground, and then as I um, enter into my flight phase. And just a reminder, we have an electrode on the tibialis anterior that dorsiflexes the foot, the gastrocnemius that plantar flexes or pushes down, and then the hamstrings that um, flex the knee and extend the hip, and the quadriceps that extend the knee. So we'll get to look at those signals when she does it. Um, the other thing we'll, we'll have are the ground reaction forces. And so before we show you the, the profile, think about what it might look like. She'll, she'll first be standing, so it's basically just a, an expensive bathroom scale. So we'll get how many newtons she is, and it should look pretty flat. Then she'll do the counter movement, and then she'll start pushing up. And then when she's in the air, obviously the forces will be zero. And then um, again, when she hits the ground. So think about what you kind of expect that trajectory to look like as she drops down, pushes up, and then lands again. Yeah, think about what forces I need to exert on, exert on the ground in order to lift me off the ground. I'll go run the motion capture experiment over here. We'll collect the data and take a look at that in, uh, in just a minute. Perfect. Go and jump good. in. All right, here we go. Perfect. That was great. Got the data. Let's take a look. All right. 